Hey guys, Bob from RetroRGB here, and I want to show you guys how to play Sonic Mania, but on a CRT and with a more authentic experience to make it feel more like an old Sonic game. So I'll start out with the easiest way to do it, and then we'll go with some of the uh, more crazier nerdy methods to get it on an RGB monitor. Of course, the easiest way to use a CRT is just to find a monitor that's compatible with newer signals. So you could take the HDMI output of the PS4 and you could either find a tube TV that has an HDMI input or you could use HDMI to component or VGA or even SDI adapters if you're lucky enough to try to find one of the Sony BVM widescreen monitors that handles all high-end resolutions. So you could actually run 720p into both this and this monitor, meaning you could actually hook your Switch or your PS4 directly up to it and then just be playing on a widescreen CRT. So while it doesn't feel exactly like playing on an old square tube monitor, at least it's one step closer. And these things uh, probably aren't too hard to find. Usually they still sell for about a hundred bucks because they're really good quality, but any widescreen HD tube would definitely do the trick for you. Trying to find one of these on the other hand, good luck. If you do manage to find one of the widescreen HD CRTs, having an HDMI port is easiest, but you could totally get away with just using the component video inputs. Having a converter that goes from 720p HDMI to component, it's very easy to find and they're very cheap. If you're looking to game on a CRT but can't find a widescreen one, another really cheap and easy option is to find just an old VGA monitor. Now, of course, you could run it in whatever resolution you'd like, so this one's running in 1366 by 768 but you really want to run it in 480p, 640 by 480 in order for a more authentic look. So, the first few things you have to do is look at the settings INI file of Sonic Mania, uh, make sure it's set to 640 by 480 and then add picks width equals 1 to the end. Now, I'll copy my settings below so you can see for yourself, but once that's all set, the easiest thing to do is run a utility called Quick Res. So um, this is because a lot of Windows computers don't have a 640 by 480 mode that they allow you to manually go into. I'm actually sure why they didn't disable that, or why they disabled that, but the easiest way to achieve that is just go into Quick Res and select 640 by 480. And that's it. So as you can see, both resolutions changed to 640, and now it's a square resolution. So now I'm just going to launch Sonic Mania via a link to the patcher. And there you go. Now you might notice the toolbar on the bottom below. That's just because I have OBS running recording this. Uh, you will not get that on your version of it. But as you can see, it looks pretty cool. It really looks exactly like Sonic 3 for Genesis, just, you know, a little bit sharper without any scan lines. So essentially, this is about the as close as it's going to get if you don't have any other equipment, but can get your hands on a cheap CRT monitor. You can actually accomplish the same thing with an RGB monitor that supports 480p, such as a Sony BVM D series or even a Sony PVM 20L5 or 14L5. This is all done through a sync combiner. So I like to use the Ektron RXI boxes. This is a, an RXI 203 RXI, and it has three inputs and a bunch of extra features, but you could find much, much cheaper ones on eBay, especially ones that don't come with power supplies, and then if you're just handy with a soldering gun, just make your own out of something cheap you get off of Amazon or eBay. So pretty much you can get a sync combiner device for about 20 bucks if you're willing to do a little extra work. And all this does, or at least in the case of what it's doing here, is combines the two syncs that VGA has. So VGA is RGB, HV, horizontal and vertical syncs, and each of those run at a voltage that is designed for VGA monitors. When you put it through one of these, it changes that sync to S, so the H and V are combined and drop down to a voltage that's designed for RGBS composite video signals, composite video sync signals, sorry. Um, but basically, uh, you know, it's, it, it looks great, but it's the same effect as being on a VGA monitor in that the scan lines don't quite look like they normally would in the Sega Genesis. 
Well, I think this is what you guys really wanted to see. 240p into an RGB monitor. This is done by taking the 480p VGA output of a computer and putting it through a downscaler. This one particularly is the Extron Super Emotia, but they have different models available that can do this. The Extron ones are pretty hard to find. There's a brand called Mimo that makes something called the Genius 2 that would accomplish the same thing. And while they're very expensive, um, it will work with any 480p VGA signal, which means if you're able to get Sonic Mania on a device that outputs 480p component video, you could just do a component to VGA converter into this onto your RGB monitor. And one last option is to just install a video card that outputs RGB 240p natively. Now, I like to use arcade VGA cards because they're pretty simple. All you have to do is just install them, run the software, and that's it. Even directly on boot, even through the DOS screens, it outputs 240p. But a lot of arcade enthusiasts don't like these at all because they're very expensive, and you could accomplish the same thing with some other standard ATI video cards that you can get for about $20. So I guess my suggestion to you is if you're a PC nerd like me and you don't mind a little bit of tinkering to get a basic VGA card working, then just do that and save some money. But if you'd rather just have something that you plug in, load some drivers and reboot, then this is the one for you. So let's take a look at how it, how it works and how it looks on the screen. So this is it. 240p directly from the arcade VGA card via this small form factor PC through a sync combiner into a Sony BVM. But I mean, this is just basic RGB signals, so any RGB monitor will work with this. And it's 240p, so it just, it looks exactly like old school Genesis. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, it, I don't know that there's much of a difference, if any really, between running 480p through an Emotia versus direct 240p. But I do know that it's probably cheaper to buy a card and an old PC and do that than it is to buy any of those downscaling solutions. So if you're trying to use a PS4 or any device that just outputs 480p, you need a downscaler. But if you're using a PC, I mean, this is a pretty cool option. So uh, I'm very pleased with how this came out, and uh, I think I'm going to go play myself some Sonic Mania old school style. Well, I just played through a couple of levels of Sonic Mania in 240p on that CRT RGB monitor, and it was absolutely awesome. It totally gave me a blast of nostalgia, like I was playing a brand new Sega Genesis Sonic game for the first time. But, honestly, I gotta say, it's a great game no matter what display you play it on. I didn't have more fun playing it on an RGB monitor than I did on a big flat screen, but I did get a shot of nostalgia that I didn't get while playing it on a big flat OLED TV. So it's really up to you and what you're looking for. Me personally, even though I run RetroRGB.com and you know I'm all about trying to get the best out of your old consoles, when I go to play games, the only thing I care about is how good the game is and how much fun it is to actually play the game. So Sonic Mania, in my personal opinion, just wins in that because it just plays like a great Sonic game regardless of the display. But hopefully this video gave you a guide on how to play Sonic Mania on old CRTs in really good quality. There's of course a plenty of other different ways that you could do it. You could get one of those HDMI to composite video converters that smushes everything down to 480i and it looks pretty terrible. You know, there's lots of cheap ways to do it if you just want to accomplish the task just to see what it looks like and probably those HDMI to composites are the best way to do it, but it looks terrible. Any of the methods that I showed in this video is gonna be an enjoyable experience that if nothing else is equal to playing it on a high quality, low lag flat screen. So it's really up to you on how you'd wanna play it. I would just always stick to something high quality that doesn't ruin the experience because it interlaces it and turns it ugly. If you liked this video, please subscribe and consider donating to the Patreon. The links are down below in the description. I really love making these videos, and I'd love to continue to make a lot more, but I can't do it without your support. Luckily, I have a great group of Patreons that's kept me going this far. I just keep, want to keep on going as long as I can. So please put any comments down below. I love to hear from everybody. Um, you know, Any feedback you guys have, as always, good or bad, I'd love to hear it. And I'll see you guys next time.